Lab number three is beaks of finches. Uh, the first statement there says the finches' beaks are different due to variation. Now this is really an evolution concept. Remember variation is caused by three different factors. Um, if we're looking for kind of a definition of variation, this is talking about differences in genes. One is going to be random mutations. Remember, a mutation is going to be when that genetic code changes. So we're looking at A, T, C's, and G's. Even just one letter is going to have an effect on what amino acid is produced, and then the amino acid will have an effect on the um, shape and function of that specific protein. Another thing is sexual reproduction. That's because if you're thinking about sperm and egg coming together, right, that are formed by meiosis, half from the mom, half from the dad, then they make a zygote with a full and complete set. That full and complete set is different than both what the mom and the dad had. So you should understand variation is caused by random mutations, sexual reproduction, and then again meiosis. The birds with the best adapted beaks survive and reproduce, passing on their beneficial adaptation. Remember, an adaptation is going to be a positive trait. Know how to read this finch wheel. There are some years where it's not on there, and then there are other years where there's about five questions related to it. So how do we read it? First thing I would say is don't pay attention to the pictures, because sometimes the pictures are misleading. If I look on the outside, that's going to tell me where all the names are. Right? Medium ground finch, small ground finch, and you'll notice some of them have very similar names, so be careful when you're using it. If I look on this inner layer, this tells me what the beak is capable of doing. Right? Can it crush? Can it probe? Probe means kind of get into tiny little spots. Um, is it more for biting things? And then in the inside, that's telling me what the finch is going to be eating. So let's say they'll say there's, a, there's an island that has a lot of nuts on the island. So what you have to think is, if there's going to be nuts, what type of beak is going to be best for that environment? So edge crushing, biting, probing. If it's a hard nut or seed, you're going to want one that's capable of crushing. Now any of these guys would be a good example. Why? No, this says edge crushing here. This is a crushing bill. So large, medium, small ground finch or the shark billed ground finch. Let's say that they were talking about the fact that all of a sudden a new organism came and that new organism um, liked to eat insects. It might say what would be an example of that. Now insects here, anything that would be animal food, that's what you would be looking at in this section. So that would be something like a large tree finch, small woodpecker or warbler. They might say all of a sudden another finch came in, this finch was, um, let's say the sharp billed ground finch came. And there was already a medium ground finch living there and then a small tree finch. What's going to happen when that sharp billed finch comes in? Well, the sharp ground finch is eating mainly plant food. This medium ground finch is also eating mainly plant food and then this small tree finch is eating mainly animal food. Which two are going to compete? That'd be the medium and the sharp-billed ground finch. That's because they eat the same food. They're trying to occupy the same niche. Remember, if two organisms are occupying the same niche, they're going to compete for food. The better adapted one is going to be able to survive and reproduce, and the other one could potentially go extinct because it doesn't have good characteristics or good adaptations to let it survive. The small tree finch would be relatively unaffected because, again, it's not competing for food. Now, one of the main ideas of the lab was that it was broken down into three rounds. Round one, there was no competition. Round two, you competed with one other group. And then round three, there might have been four or five groups all trying to eat out of the same tin. The main idea here is, is that when there's more competition, only the best adapted will survive. And that's due to the fact that there's limited resources. Now, our example is food, but it could also be limited water, limited space, things such as that. So more competition means less organisms are going to be able to survive.